Hello everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Marino Sutecho, a gold member of Stalitai Odontic. Uh, greetings from Indonesia for all of you. Uh, this time I will going to give you a very short uh, lecture about how to manage the lacerated canals. But before we go, there will be some several topics that I would like to discuss with all of you about the lacerated canals. First of all is the definition. Uh, secondly is the prevalences and how we identified it and uh, how we can manage these delacerated canals. If we are talking about the definitions of delacerations, the terms of delacerations was first used by Thomas in 1848 and defined as a deviations or a bend in linear relationship of a crown of a tooth to its root. And these definitions of course will be followed by its prevalences. If you are looking up from the literatures about the prevalences of the lacerations, in 2002, Eversol uh, stated that there is no sex predilection. So it means between male or female patients, they have the same uh, prevalences of, of the root canal delacerations. In 1983, Kohayeb just reported a frequency that ranging from 0.32% up to 98% of teeth. Later, in 2002, Hama, Hamasha, uh, he mentioned that two-thirds of the delacerations were in the mandible. And this also uh, reinforced by what Malchik in 2006 uh, has, been, has, has stated that the prevalences is greater in the posterior and in the mandible with the fewer occurrences among the anterior teeth and in the mandible. Then usually, these delacerations is happen in the middle third of the root and the coronal third of the root is most frequently seen in the third molars. So we know that these delacerations, it means the bend of the roots, or we can say a, a curvature or a very uh, severe curvatures of the root can happen both in our male and female patients uh, with the prevalences up to 98%, and mostly it will be happening on the manipulated molars, and especially in the, uh, in the molar regions compared to the other two. And how we can identify these delacerations? Of course, we need to use our radiographic examinations. And if you want to define these delacerations, there should be considered in two planes. So we can have a initial distal uh, curvature. We can also have a buccal or lingual curvature. If initial distal, usually we can, be, uh, we can see it in the two-dimensional radiograph. But if the delacerations were towards the buccal or lingual or maybe uh, palatal, then we need a 3D or CBCT to identify it. Like in these pictures, you can see on the left side, it is from the papers that has been written by Dr. Paul Abbott. The, the, the delacerations, it happens uh, towards the, the buccal or the, the uh, uh, palatal direction. That's why we cannot see clearly the, the, the delacerations. But on the right side, you can see if the uh, delacerations is goes to the mesial or to the distal, then we can see clearly on our uh, uh, periapical radiogram. But we need to understand if you want to see, if you want to use two dimensional uh, radiograph to identify this deliceration, panoramic alone is not a good choice uh, because it cannot be, it, it cannot uh, help us to determine whether. Uh, the, di the, the directions of the delacerations goes to the buccal or label or patal or lingual directions. Uh, periapical radiograph, in this case, it's better compared to the panoramic radiograph, but uh, be careful and make sure uh, we need to use uh, uh, more than one angle and we need uh, also to apply symlingual opposite buccal technique uh, for us to have more than one angle of uh, radiograph so we can determine the directions uh, better compared only using one angle of the very epic radiograph. Of course, uh, in this recent era, CPCT or uh, three-dimension uh, radiograph is always an option. Uh, for, for sure, it will be uh, the best choice for us to identify the deletions in the canal. In this case, as you can see, I'm trying to use my slope technique and one of the angle can catch this image. You can see clearly there has been some delacerations in the apical two, uh, third uh, of the root of this mandibular molar. So the most important part of the root canal delacerations is how we can manage of these uh, delacerations. 
uh, of course, in any endodontic procedures, number one uh, procedures that we need to create an access cavity. So what is the most important uh, about the access cavity in this case, as you can see, is the carriers. So uh, if we want to do our endodontic procedure, I have to uh, admit and I have to say that the carriers must be completely free before we need uh, to start our endodontic procedure. So I usually use my carpike purse in the low speed to remove all the carriers until I can see that the carriers is free and I can see uh, a healthy two structures before I carry on my endodontic procedures. So uh, how to manage this delay solutions uh, root canal? Of course, we need to create adequate access. By means adequate is that we have a sufficient space for our instruments to maneuver inside the root canals. Because with, with this adequate spaces of access cavity, it can reduce our hydrogenic errors. It can also reduce uh, the coronal interferences. And don't forget, sometimes we need also to expand it, uh, our access cavity in the opposite directions uh, of the curvatures using our ultrasonic tip in order to have a better and a safer maneuvering ability of our instruments. So, for example, in this case, you see that the, uh, the, the curve is towards the distal. So it means I have to slightly uh, expand our access cavity towards the dimensia. So by using ultrasonic tip, I will slightly expand it my access cavity. So I will have more spaces. By means have more spaces, it means that I can use my endodontic instruments to shape and I can uh, place it uh, as close as to the wall of our access cavity. In this case, you can see it is easier and safer for the tip our, of our instruments go uh, to reach the, the apical or to the working length of the curvature. Also, in this case, you can see if you are uh, only making a very small access cavity, look, if, for example, uh, like this big, uh, it means that our instruments cannot go freely uh, and the tip of the instruments also can, can be very easy to create a latch here because we are not expanding enough our access cavity and not have a good adequate access. Also in this uh, journal that has been uh, written by James in 2015, you can see by having a smaller access cavity, it will increase the difficulty level of our shaping protocol. So we don't want this to happen. We want to make sure that our instruments can be safely go inside into uh, the working length without any uh, errors. That's why we need to create a sufficient and adequate uh, access cavity space uh, for uh, this type of delacerations. And by also having a very small access cavity, it will increase uh, and also lowering the fracture risk at the cyclic fatigue resistance of our instruments. In this, uh, in this paper that has been written uh, by our uh, gold member as well, Professor Simona Grandini, uh, you can see in true access cavity, the, the resistance for these instruments, it happens quite high in here, comparing if we are creating a good adequate access cavity. So <clears throat> I'm not uh, give you a suggestions in this delicerations to create a very small access cavity. Uh, so in, we need to understand also one of the cause uh, that latch formations uh, uh, happens is because we are not extending the access cavity sufficient to allow adequate access cavity to the apical of the root canal. So therefore, the first thing first that we need to have is a good uh, and adequate access cavity space. After we manage to create access cavity, then we continue to the most important part of this uh, delacerations of the root canal, which is how we can safely shape this root canal. So uh, first thing first, we need to create our coronal enlargement. Why? Because if we previously do our coronal enlargement, it means we are reducing the coronal interference and it will create a sufficient space at the coronal portions for the next instruments uh, uh, to go in and uh, it, it will allow uh, the instrument steps to correct flowing and proper actions to create glyphed. Imagine if you don't do create coronal enlargement in this area, our instruments that we use to create glyphed will have a quite uh, interference in this coronal and it will be easy uh, for the instruments to have a taper lock and also an instrument fracture. 
And uh, the best way to create coronal enlargement is by using uh, a specific instruments, uh, usually uh, instruments that have a big taper and a short uh, cutting blade. Uh, and when it in in which its function is only to remove uh, or to enlarge the coronal portions of the canal. In this image, what you see is the uh, file from Fanta AF Blue S1 with the tip of 17 and the taper of 12%, which is quite efficient to remove all the coronal enlargement before we proceed to our uh, sh next shaping protocol, which is the apical portions. Well, thanks to the absence of any coronal interference, it means if we have uh, removed our coronal interference in this area, then we can have good sensitivity of our hands uh, for the instruments to go and feel uh, at the apical portions of the tooth. And the shaping of the apical portions will be performed respecting the original anatomy by maintaining a very good glide path. And don't forget to make sure to confirm the patency all the time because in this uh, root canal deterioration of our severe uh, curvature of the canal, sometimes it's very easy for the instruments to create the debris plug uh, at the apical portions. And when you already have a debris plug uh, in the apical portions, sometimes it's a very difficult thing uh, to recover. So I'm going to introduce to all of you uh, the instruments uh, from Fanta, which is quite new instruments in Indonesia. It is called the Fanta AF Blue S1. It's made from the blue wire and it has a triangular cross sections and it's good uh, respect to the canal anatomy. It has a wide range of the sizes. It has a minimal radial contact for better cutting ability. And it has also a good variable pitch for efficient debris transport and a balanced cutting ability and a very good resistance to cyclic fatigue. And this AF Blue S1 is a rotary file that we need to put our endodontic motor instruments uh, with the speed of 350 to 450 RPM with the torque of 2 nanocentimeters. So <clears throat> before we start, the instruments material of this AF Blue S1 is made of the AFR wire which is it's a, it treated, it's a very better flexibility. And as you can see here, uh, it has a no memory shifts properties. You can bend these files and it will not go back into its uh, original position, which is it's quite safer if you use it in, in the very uh, uh, severe curvature, because we know that this uh, file will not easily make our root canal straight uh, and keep the, the shapes of the uh, uh, root canal in a good uh, curvature. And it's also have a higher resistance to cyclic fatigue uh, thanks, to the uh, thanks to this instrument's material uh, that is made from the heated treated alloy called the AFR wire from Fanta. So I'm going to give you this uh, simulations how we should manage our delicerations. First of all, we need to scout our root canal with the file. Use it in watch winding motions until you feel resistance. Uh, if you think that the, the 10K file is too high resistance, then go with the number A. Confirm with your apex locator that you are reaching already the apex. When you are reaching the apex already, so it means make sure uh, that you remove it and you uh, lower down uh, the rubber stops and measure your working length. First, after you know the working length, first thing first, coronal enlargements to remove every, any coronal interference. In this video, uh, the Fanta AF Blue S1 tip 17 taper 12% has been used. Reintroduce one more thing, uh, your K file, make sure you still have a good patency to the working length with your apex locator. And then continue to create your reproducible clive path. I'm going to use my Fanta F1-1303 to create a good clive pad. And don't forget, if you use your rotary file, always make sure you have a full fluid canal as a lubricant. Always follow by the copious irrigations to make sure the debris is out. After you create clive pad, I'm going to continue my shaping protocols using the AF Blue S1 Tip 20 Taper 04 until you go to the working length. But sometimes in curved canals, you cannot go directly only one strokes to the working length. Sometimes you need to repeat it uh, several times. 
by means several times. It means each time uh, always check your patency and make sure you gain already your working length. After you clean your uh, flute, the, the flute on your blade, and then make sure continue again with the Fanta uh, 2004. And after each reach working length, then I'm going to continue with my final shaping of 2504 in this severe curvature or root canal dilacerations until the working length. You can see if there is uh, enough uh, debris at the flutes, uh, at the apical flutes, if the breeze was loaded, then I'm going to continue my shaping. But if you see that the debris is not loaded and the apical area, you might want to change with the 2506 uh, to continue your shaping protocols. So in this case, I'm, con I'm stopping with my 2504 to make sure that I still have a good uh, shapes of the delicerations of the root canal. So thank you very much for your attentions and hope in this short lecture, there will be some things that I can share with all of you and uh, uh, it, will, it, it can give you advantage in your clinical routines of root canal delacerations. Goodbye and have a nice day.